team effort, everyone, but I'm uh, glad to greet you on behalf of my colleagues, our colleagues at the Atlanta University Center, Robert W. Woodruff Library. Um, I also am a reference librarian here and my subject majors, uh, subject areas are psychology and mass media arts. Um, I get called to uh, be the mouthpiece a lot because of my personal story. So I always give my stump speech and I'll do it here. I'm a third generation HBCU alumna. My grandparents met at Morris Brown. My parents met at Clark College. Uh, my little sister is Spelman College class of, I'm not going to give you the date. I'm not aging myself. My favorite cousin who owes me $20 is from Morehouse College. And I say that because I'm texting him when I leave here. Um, Jessica and I both work in a team of eight. Um, and we are all e extremely emotionally invested, academically invested in our community. And that's why uh, we really jump at the chance to talk to groups like this one uh, with Dr. Earl Lewis, because we believe in the academic effort. We work to support it. And in this context for OER, um, we are part of both the learning community and the teaching community. We're trying to teach faculty um, about what OER is and what they need to uh, the mindset they need to have in order to adopt it. Um, but we also are trying to help, uh, to help understand ourselves what OER is and how we as a library can help. And so what we've done without further ado and to get my big face off of the screen, I'm going to show you the hub for where the library keeps all our information about open educational resources. We keep this page, it's called in the library, a research guide, but it's really just a curated website that gives all of our resources related to OER. It also acts as a general explainer. So what Dr. Earl Lewis's uh, center at Morehouse does is they teach faculty about this extensively, way more extensively than the library. What we do is we teach the faculty at the other schools we serve. My library, the Atlanta University Center, Robert W. Woodruff Library, serves Morehouse College, Spelman College, Clark Atlanta University, and the Interdenominational Theological Center. And so everybody in this AUC community is not on the same playing field when it comes to OER. It's one of the reasons why we go to bat for Morehouse, because a little secret, don't tell anybody, they're on the cutting edge of OER in the AU Center. Dr. Earl Lewis didn't pay me to say that. Um, the idea is we have somewhere for the other faculty at the other institutions to go. Um, and because we know that students are thinking about what's the big thing, textbooks, how much they cost, trying not to pay for them. Uh, the other anecdote I give um, when I speak to faculty is that your students are not buying the textbooks, everybody. Um, we can feel how we wanna feel about it, but they're not. So what can we do to ensure students get the information they need? It means that we as HBCU institutions need to be involved in the OER conversation and we actually need to produce content. I won't preach because that's why we're all here. We are the OER group, but the library is starting to teach our faculty using a guide like this one. You know, we got some stats. Uh, one of the things we did in terms of design is we like headlines in the library. We're telling you why you should get involved in the H -E o OER um, endeavor. So we're trying to save money, save time, improve access, democratize learning. Uh, this website is uh, available openly to everybody. I'm sure Jessica will drop it, the link in the chat shortly. Um, it's authored by the champion librarian of OER. He's not here today. His name is Brad Ost. He's our theology librarian. The joke is he can't do your homework for you, but he can pray about it with you. Um, he authors this page. And I'm saying all this to say that if you have a resource that you want to use from here, if you have a suggestion for us for how we can you know, make it more robust. We're talking about how to find, adopt, create, and um, utilize OER resources in the classroom. We also get a little bit into copyright. But if you have something you think you want us to add, reach out to us, reach out to me, reach out to Jessica. We'll pass it along to Brad so that he can uh, walk you through it. Um, thanks for putting that in the chat, Jessica. The other show and tell I want you to, want to, to do in this few minutes I have with you is to show you our first big OER project, which Brad um, undertook with a uh, faculty member at the ITC, the Interdenominational Theological Center. Remember, that's the seminary. That's the school for the preachers. Uh, Brad and one of his faculty members wrote an OER textbook. And that's this next link. If you've looked down, I changed what's on the screen. Now it's another research guide, 
but it's really not. This is a working living textbook. It's our most popular research guide on the library's website. Brad and the faculty member authored an original textbook that is not only our most popular, but it's one of the few texts out there about this traditional African religion, Ifa. We're getting hits all over the world. It was published using Creative Commons licensing, and it's on this platform, which is pretty easy to navigate. The library pays to subscribe to this uh, uh, platform. It's called um, SpringShares LibGuides or Live Guides, depending on your pronunciation preference. Um, if you're at another institution, ask your library if they um, subscribe to LibGuides because that's really what we just, Brad and the faculty member thought would be a good quick way to get um, the content out. And so what did they focus on? The content. Um, I've enjoyed over the past couple of months clicking through this. Um, I encourage you to, I think Jessica's put the link in there. This is a working textbook on that topic. And he and that faculty member um, put it together the graphics and the, the, um, the photos. They wrote text. They've got the layout of the um, textbook in a logical way that's easy to navigate. And it's working. This professor is using this in his class. His name is Dr. Coleman um, as we speak. And it's just really impressive. Since the adoption of this textbook, Brad and his faculty member have been all over the AU Center showing it off. Um, this is something that could work for more than just African tr traditional religions, y'all. This, this could be a math textbook. This could be something for the African-American spirit, I mean, experience. This could be new student orientation. Um, at this time, I wanna ask Jessica if there's anything you think I needed to uh, go over on this textbook before I finish. I don't think so. There's that one chapter that Brad always likes to show. Um, oh, the appendices? Yeah, is it the 256 Odoo? Is that the yes. one this, for the okay. ancient cosmologies? So what I did was I clicked to a, his favorite part of the book to show off. And that is because um, he and the faculty member, this is Brad that I'm talking about, my colleague, they came up with this very rare, unusual graphic illustration um, that is also available as a spreadsheet um, that explains the 256 holy, it's, it's basically sacred scriptures from this, um, this uh, religion. And this is significant because this is new, this is a new contribution to the academic study of African traditional religions. And so they're getting a lot of hits on this page. Library staff took a lot of time to put together both the spreadsheet and the graphic, and it's paying dividends for both the faculty member and his students, but also to Brad, um, because it's really, it's something that hasn't been done before. I think um, if you were to ask what his pride point is, it's this one appendix, Appendix D in this book. Um, we are seeking to do more OER projects with faculty from all the schools we serve. This first one just so happened to be a home run. I'm using baseball analogies. Um, we want to and are, are offering the opportunity to collaborate with the library on OER projects to all our faculty members. And we got a few hits that I can't talk about yet, but um, more textbooks are coming. Uh, maybe some collaborative websites, maybe some other ways to offer open educational resources to the entire Atlanta University Center um, are all on tap. And it's a really exciting time in both academia and here in, the, in, in Atlanta. Um, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to speak to you this afternoon, um, bring you greetings from the, the very wet and soggy city of Atlanta. And I hope that wherever you are, that you're safe, that you're dry, and that you are doing what you need to do to be in academia, in the, on campus including wearing your mask, but I feel like I'm preaching, so I'll stop. I'm, I'm done sharing. Um, thank you, Dr. Earl Lewis, for this invitation. If there's anything that I can um, answer, I'm waiting by on the chat. <laughs>